Hi, Bill from CJ Pony Parts. We recently installed a fuel tank in our forgotten fastback project car. The next step of the restoration is going to be install the fuel line that's going to go from the tank up to where the pump mounts. While we're installing that, we're going to install the intermediate brake line as well since it shares a lot of the mounting points with the fuel line. Since we're planning on some reasonable horsepower upgrades to our forgotten fastback, we're going to be going with the 3 8 inch line originally found on the Shelby models. When this line ships to you, it does ship bent, which is the only way to ship it due to the length of the line. You will want to straighten it out before you install it. To install our lines, we'll be using AMK's brake line and fuel line clip kit. The kit's nice because it breaks down everything into individual packaging. You have your lines that are shared between the brake and fuel lines, the specific fuel line brackets, and the specific hardware for the brake lines. For this installation, you need a jack end jack stands or lift, 3 8 ratchet, half inch socket, short extension, pliers, wire or hose cutters, drill, 9 32nd drill bit, flathead screwdriver, and safety glasses. You'll want to start by getting your Mustang up in the air. Since the fuel line comes around the frame rail and through the apron, you want to remove the driver's side tire to give yourself more room. Our fuel lines are pre-bent, so they're going to get you close, but they're not going to be a perfect fit. You will have to maneuver it a little bit to get it into place. Before we put the line in, I'm going to show you the basic route the fuel line is going to take. The fuel line will go through this lower hole here into the engine bay. It'll then come down here. It's going to go across your frame rail between your control arms. Come out this end here. It'll follow this down. And then cross the frame rail below where the steering box is. And it's going to come up here, go across the floor support, underneath the cross member mount which point it's going to cut up into the tunnel area. It's going to go across the tunnel. And we'll come back here to the transition pan area. It's going to come up the transition pan. And it's going to go across out to the frame rail again. It'll go underneath this, back along the frame rail to the tank. And it's going to go straight across the tank, come down to your sending unit. We're going to start by installing the grommet, this hole here where the fuel line goes into the engine bay. Grommet is designed for the smaller line, but the 3 8 will fit through it. Now we're going to start straightening the line out for installation. The end that has the shorter 90 degree bend is going to be the line that goes up front to our fuel pump. This is where we're going to start with. Just want to get it relatively straight for now. It will straighten out as we install it. We'll start by bringing our fuel line up through our control arms. Get up into place and push it through the grommet. Now we're going to put the fuel line over the rear axle. Once you get this tighter to the chassis, it'll be harder to get this over. It's easier to bend it now and then we'll tighten it down later. install the first bracket up front here. Our next mounting clip is going to install right here on the cross member. Since it's a replacement panel, there is no hole there, so we're going to drill it first. You want to line up the line where it's going to go and drill right next to it. This is the first of the clips that's going to hold both the brake and the fuel line at the same time. We're going to put it on loosely to hold the fuel line in place and then we'll get our brake line on there next. Now we're going to start running our brake line. The end that has the 90 degrees is going to go up towards your master cylinder. The end with a U is going to go towards the back.
Now we'll loosen up our fuel line bracket so we can install the brake line in it. Just keep it tight enough so it doesn't fall off. You don't want to tighten down all the way because there's still going to be some adjustment made before we actually finalize it. Now we're going to install the clips in the transmission tunnel. This clip here will hold both the fuel and the brake line. It uses this fitting here. You're going to put a set of pliers and then squeeze once you have it installed. Now we're going to install the rear one. Now we're going to tweak our fuel line into place a little bit. And our next bracket's going to go up here. Again, it's a replacement frame rail, so we're going to have to drill a hole. I'm going to drill another hole in the transition pan for another clip back here. Now we need to drill a hole in the front lip of the fuel tank mounting area. Since we're drilling towards a tank, you want to be really careful here. Put a piece of metal behind it so when you drill through, you don't hit your tank. We're going to take the clip, slide it in the hole we just drilled. And then we'll slide our fuel line up into the clip. We're going to line up our hose so we can measure it and cut a piece off. Now we're going to move back to the front and put our last bracket right here between the three bolts for our steering box to hold the line to the frame rail. Now we'll tighten up this bolt. and our fuel line insulation is finished. Now that our fuel line's finished, next time out, we'll water up some brake hoses and we'll finish off our braking system as well. To follow the restoration of our forgotten fastback and for more insulation videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel.